where yeah. that's available. Uh, can you uh, show us what uh, what it looks like? What you're sure, through? sure. The key thing, Anne, is really the operating system here. Right? Yes, it's not a definitely. new machine, it's a new no. operating system. The GS has the been out for almost two years, and what I'm booting up right now is the new Apple II GS system software, version 4.0, mm -hmm. which we recently introduced about a month ago at Apple Fest. Well, while it's boot booting up, uh, mm -hmm. can, could you, have you identified the customer base now? I obviously you have over the past two years. Who buys the GS? Um, people who are interested in doing home productivity, families, mm -hmm. and um, we have a very large education base in both K through 12 areas as well as some college base, but it's primarily a K through 12 machine and home productivity mm -hmm. machine for families. Okay. So what we're booting into right now is basically the heart of the, of the new system software, which is GSOS, the new operating mm -hmm. system. And some of the improvements that GSOS brings to the GS are, first of all, increased disk access, which, as you can see, definitely speeds the boot time of the system over our previous system software. And we've also introduced the concept of file system translation. And essentially, what file system translation allows us to do is um, access data files from other operating systems. Mm -hmm. And um, what we've done is we've created new tools called FSTs, or file system translators, mm -hmm. which allow us to do that. And one of the things I'd like to demonstrate today is um, the file system translator for the High Sierra file system. And as you can see, we've got a system right here that's configured with CD-ROM. And um, one of the things that we can do is, through using the High Sierra FST, we can actually um, access applications CD-ROM applications such as Bookshelf, which is from Microsoft. And bring it right into Multiscribe. And bring it right mm -hmm. into Multiscribe. M Multiscribe is a very popular GS mm -hmm. word processing program. A lot of our users have it. Um, so what I am right now, I'm in a Multiscribe file. And what I'm going to do is go into my disk area. And I'll go ahead and scan through some of my different volumes here until I bring up Bookshelf. And I'll go ahead and open a Bookshelf file. Let's just say I want to access Bartlett's quotations, okay. for instance. And I've actually imported a, a, a data file from Bookshelf into my Multiscribe package. And this really opens up the world of CD-ROM for our users, and especially our education customers are very interested in, in being able to access all the data that you mm -hmm. can find on CD-ROM applications. Uh, what are the kind of applications you, do you really see in the CD-ROM area? Mm -hmm. um, well, CD-ROM is really a, a new industry for us, and it's really exploding, and, and we're supporting it now with um, the CD-ROM drive that we introduced in March. And this is the first time we've actually supported it on the Apple II line. Okay. So mm -hmm. any large storage um, application, you know, this one is, is a good example. Um, I guess encyclopedia. Exactly. Okay. exactly. <laughs> Quickly, Anne, could, you, could you run us back to the operating system sure. and show us some of the new tools that are in the OS? Yeah, in addition to the new operating system, we've created two new t utilities that will really help our users better manage their hard files, as well as configure their systems. As you, as you, as you probably know better than I, computing is becoming much more complex. Mm -hmm. And um, so two of the new utilities that we have, what I'm launching right now is the installer. And the installer is a great program because it allows the user to really easily configure their systems. Um, if you start adding hard drives and CD-ROMs and various other things, it becomes somewhat complicated to make sure you have the right drivers. So on the right or left-hand side right here, I have some of the different drivers that you can add to your system, everything from MIDI to image writer support to CD-ROM support. Let's just click on CD-ROM and install this driver. That way I know I'll definitely be able to run this program. Mm -hmm. and what you can see right now is a little box that's giving you feedback on the process of adding the driver as well as what files are being added. So you don't have to worry about the different system file mm -hmm. management. It's taken care of for you. Okay, you've got one other new utility in there, don't you? Sure. Let me get out of this, and we'll go into the advanced disk utility. Right. And that lets you do what? The advanced disk utility really helps you set up your hard drive and manage the information that's found there. And um, users, when, when they first start putting, setting up their hard drive, they'll need to either initialize it or zero it out if it has other information. But another important um, element to this is partitioning. And that's something we haven't supported prior to today, or actually in the last month. Mm -hmm. And what I'm showing you right now is a new partitioning utility. And what I have on the, on the, the right side here are three different partitions that um, uh, we've set up on this particular hard drive. And I'll show you that we can change the partition size as well as... Um, and why, why are you partitioning the, the disk? Sure. One of the reasons you might partition a disk is to have different file formats. Okay. Um, maybe you want to so mix Pascal fi uh, files with Proto files, things like, like that. that. Mm -hmm. So I can yeah. add and delete partitions and b change the partition sizes. Okay. So 
Okay, Ann, can I ask you to load up Stu's program sure. while I talk to Stu? Uh, how important is the 2GS as a product line to software developers like Activision? Well, Activision is really dedicated to the Apple 2GS and to that education and home marketplace that Ann had mentioned. Uh, to the large growing developer base, I think you're seeing a lot more activity in the GS as some of the original Apple II developers have now started shifting their emphasis over to the new machine. Do you have any idea what the size of that market is now? Right now, there's over 300,000 2GSs installed, and that's mm -hmm. growing. Mm -hmm. uh, we anticipate, as what happened last year, that during the Christmas quarter, they'll sell more Apple 2GSs than any other Apple mm -hmm. CPU. Stu, you've got a paint program from Activision, uh, which takes advantage of the graphics of the GS. Describe it and show it to us. Yeah, this is Paintworks Gold, and Paintworks Gold is one of eight products that we make for the Apple 2GS. Paintworks Gold was derived from Paintworks Plus, which is a 512K version of the product for ease of use and has made its way into many schools. What we're going to take a look at here are some of the advanced features that you can do with the 2GS using Paintworks Gold. Now, the image it's going to load is one that you may have seen. It's the Taj Mahal. And we're going to use two features, slippy colors, which mm -hmm. is a unique feature, and then masking colors to make the Taj Mahal actually reflected in the pool below. What Slippy Colors actually allows you to do is define colors for your lasso tool to slip around. So we're going to define all the colors that are used in the sky. Then we're going to choose our lasso tool and select the Taj Mahal. Mm -hmm. You'll note once I have released this that just the Taj Mahal is selected. This allows you to pick out objects that you want from any painting. Now we're going to go ahead and flip this Taj Mahal around to paste it down below. So we'll just flip it vertically. Now we have our Taj. Now I'm going to move the screen around a bit. So first we'll cut this out, grab our handle. Now let's paste in the Taj Mahal. As we move it up, now we have a perfect reflection. Mm -hmm. Well, near perfect because you can see it's overlapping the grass. Well, that's where masking colors comes in. We can actually mask these colors so that you can paint behind them or mm -hmm. around them. Show us how you do that. We'll go ahead and mask some colors here. And I'm going to mask every single color and then unmask the colors that may be in the water. Now you'll note as it has made its selection that instantly the Taj goes behind. In fact, you can actually paint behind the mm -hmm. other objects that you see here on the screen. Now the last thing that we're going to do here is just make this a nice sunset picture. And we'll do that by changing the colors. Now the sky was actually created using some gradient colors. We'll go in and change those colors. We'll choose a color of red and I want to adjust my entire palette to it. And I'll start picking out some oranges that might work well in a sunset sky. And there you have very it. Very nice. Mm -hmm. Well, that's an impressive product. Stu, thank you very much. It's a nice looking yeah. machine and operating system, and thank you. That's our look at the new Apple II C Plus and the new Apple II GS. Hope we'll see you here again next week on the Computer Chronicles. In the random access file this week, an announcement from Toshiba that could replace.